In this video we're going to look at how to simply add a toolpath, set it up, calculate it, and then post it out. So for this I'll just use a real basic example. I'm going to come to Other, then Rectangle, and we'll just make a 5x5 five five rectangle with a quarter inch corner radius. I'm going to place the bottom left hand corner a quarter inch away from X and Y zero. We'll now set a direction of cut, so we'll come to Other, then Contour, We'll pick the shape. I'm going to let it go clockwise. And we'll set the longest line to start. We'll come over to our cam tree. Now to add the toolpath, we'll come over to milling stock. Right click. In this case, this would be a two axis cut. So I'll go to mill two axis. And I'll use profiling. We'll right click geometry. Left click reselect. Pick the shape, then right click and left click OK. Once we've done that, the little red dot that's next to geometry goes away, and when we click on geometry, it shows what's been selected. So we know that we've selected something. Now we come to profile under feature profile. You'll see all of these items are children of this parent item feature profile. We could also name this by clicking on it twice. So we can rename the feature. We'll now right click profile and go to edit. This is where we set up all the parameters for how we're going to cut. You have your approach and entry, wrap and plane and top apart. And the, wrap, the top apart most commonly is set as zero. Um, some people prefer to set the bottom of part or where there might be some spoil board as zero. So if you do that, you'll have to enter your thickness of material for top of part. That'll vary based on how you do your machining. Our rapid plane is the distance for rapid movement above the part. We'll come over to patterns. And this is where we set our offset. Let's say that we offset to the left. You can also use machine comp if you'd like. Then we have our total depth under parameters. What the idea is is just to follow this through and enter all the values as needed. Let's go ahead and cut this half an inch deep. We'll say in multiple steps, quarter inch per pass. You can set even or defined depths. We'll set up our side allowance. Let's say that we leave 20 thousandths for a finish pass and we'll leave zero on the bottom. Now spring passes refers to side roughing or stepping in from the side. We'll come to leads and then we set our leads. Let's say that we use a circular lead that's a quarter of an inch. You'll want to watch and make sure that your radius is at least half the size of the tool so that you can set comp if using machine comp. And we'll go ahead and put a point one overlap so that we don't end up with a little scallop on the side after cutting. We'll come to our corner types. Now you can use round or sharp. Let's go ahead and use round. This is just the difference between doing a G1 move or a G2 or G3 move around the corners. We'll come to posting. You can choose your work offset that you'll be using on the machine. And also if you're doing indexing, you can set that here. We'll come to the tool, fill out the tool size, let's say half of an inch, and we'll use a quarter inch finish tool. Now you could also use manual tool and select from your database if you've set that up. And here you can use the system feeds if you've set those up or you can just switch to a manual and fill out your feed rates accordingly. In this case we'll use system auto. We'll choose OK. Then come back to the profile name, right click and compute the toolpath. You could see the two separate passes here. Now below profile are your actual tools. You can click on and see the highlight change for each tool as well as we could also change the color of these so that we could see the difference between the rough and the finish pass fairly easily. Now that we have a toolpath generated on the screen that we can see we're ready to post. Now right below milling stock you'll see is your material, your stock, and then you have your post processor. You can right click here, go to edit, and select a different post processor if you want. Once you've selected your post processor, you can right click on milling tools, then you get the choice to either post, which just gives you a preview of the code, or you could come to post and save, and then you could save the file, either on an A drive or anywhere on your network or on your computer where you want to save the file. And that's how you add a toolpath in Bobcat. That concludes this video.